going with a little different format. Um, I'm in the shop here and working on working on sketching out a pattern here that I need to get tooled up. So I'm going to go ahead and keep on sketching here while we're chatting. Um, but same thing as always, we are going to be doing the live Q&A. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to keep an eye and address comments as those come in as well. But tonight's uh, tonight's topic is coming straight from a question that uh, that came on facebook uh, so cody with kb custom leathers asked me about reaching out with social media and how to increase following um, with social media so specifically with facebook and that it boy it's such a great question and it's what uh what cody had told me is he uh self <laughs> kind of told me that that he doesn't have great social media skills but he's looking to increase his following so he's trying that um, he's posting a couple of pictures a week of finished product and has even done a couple giveaways so but looking to increase there now Posting finished pictures is great. That's absolutely something that uh, that will help for sure. Shows people what you're doing, uh, can can spark some interest there. But we need to take that to the next level a little bit. So beyond simply finished pictures of your work, uh, let's look a little bit about what what goes into that too, because with whatever you're posting we want to try to create the engagement right it's it, it's one thing to to be posting but what what is your customer going to find interesting right what what's going to increase the likelihood that they're going to come back to see more from your page um and not only that, if somebody just happened to stumble across it, what's going to turn that person from somebody just randomly scrolling to actually converting into being a customer? And that's because that's kind of the idea too, right? You have to you have to ask. That's an important question to ask. Is you know you want to increase your following, but what? Uh, Oh, thank you. See, uh, short tail leather there. Connie, how are you this evening? Um, you want to increase your following on social media, but it's one thing to have a big following, but you have to ask yourself, what do you want to do with that following? Hello, Barb. What, uh, what is the purpose of that following, right? And uh, is it to create, you know, customers? I'm, I'm going to kind of go ahead and assume that's what that's what you're talking about here, Cody. But um, if we're if we're looking at at creating customers, what kind of customers are we creating? Are we wanting to get custom orders? Are you wanting to just sell inventory? What what is the purpose there? Um, so that's going to help you as well. So when you think about it. Yeah, you're going to be able to think, okay, this this ideal follower, because I don't want just any follower. We want a follower that's going to do something for my business, whether it's um, whether it's growing, um, you know, growing that clientele or what, uh, whatever that case is. Um, I got uh, sorry. I got kind of caught up there looking at looking at something, but we don't just want people on there like just just a number, right? Numbers don't really do you much, and that's where you can have the some some of the cheap ways to get followers, and you know, oh, follow me, I'll follow you back, that type of thing. That 
what good does that do? Because those numbers, you don't make money just on the numbers, right? Um, unless you have some sort of deal with some company, I don't know, maybe somebody's advertising with you and you do get paid on just sheer numbers. So that's a different story, but that's why you need to ask, ask that question. And so if we're looking for, for clients, as far as ordering product from you, then we need to give them a little bit more than just that finished product because they can get on any website, catalog, that sort of thing and see finished product. But part of, part of what you can do with your post is help educate your customer at the same time, right? You can show them what it takes, um, what it takes to make your product and the, the, the behind the scenes, you know, even just something like this, as I'm sitting here sketching this, um, now more than likely, most of you watching this video, um, already have a pretty good idea of what goes into leather work, right? Cause most of you guys are, are doing leather work. And, and so this isn't, uh, isn't a huge shock to you, right? However, if there was a, a potential client watching this and they could see, oh, wow, that's actually like, you have to actually draw all that stuff before you tool it. And, oh, there's not just like a, a flower stamp. There's like all these little tools that go into creating that. Then they start beginning to see value in what it is that you're doing, right? <clears throat> and not only that, a lot of people just enjoy seeing the process of, of different things. And if you're selling a finished product, instead of just waiting to post pictures of it once it's done, why not... Uh, I don't like that there. We're going to erase that. Why not show them a bit of it as you're doing it. And so there's a, builds an anticipation in there as well. People, somebody gets an eye on it, they might be watching it, hoping to either buy that particular one when it comes available or want to, uh, want to design one, something like that for themselves. But the other thing, even with just even with just finished product and posting those pictures, this is one thing that can really help. Um, and so Cody, I, I actually kind of went and, and scouted on your page a little bit there. You had sent me the link to that. And so I checked that out and, and some, some great pictures, great finished product. Um, but the text on there and I'm, not picking on you. I'm just bringing it up because uh, because you're the one who had asked the question. So it's a great great thing to work on here. But um, a lot of your text is is real plain, generic, and kind of the same over and over. Uh, meaning, hey, this this order that I got to work out. Another pair of leggings going out. This going out. This going out. Matching. Um, matching belt and, and number uh, harness, that sort of thing. Um, you're, you're really just stating what's in the picture, um, but most, most of the pictures, it's very self-explanatory what's in the picture, right? Um, so the text doesn't really add any, anything to it. It doesn't add any value to what, uh, to what the picture is. And there's, I mean, there's some, some posts where you're just going to do that. It's going to, you're going to put something out there and, hey, another belt headed out. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's an opportunity for you to grow and add more to that. Adding, adding some value in there, whether that's, um, you know, boy, I really love this uh, English bridal dye. I really love whatever something particular about that project um a picture of maybe a a product in use and and saying something about 
about that, the function of it. Um, simply adding on some sort of uh, inspirational encouragement text with that. Giving giving someone a reason to read further and look further and and uh, and really come back to see more too. And you don't even have to. It doesn't necessarily have to be your own original quotes or anything. Like that. You can find cool favorite quotes of people. Put that up. Um, you know, people want to be people want to be awed and they want to be inspired. Um, so if you can add anything like that into your posts, that really just increases the value of them. And that's that's going to bring me to one of my other other tips here. Um, I have sorry, I have to j jot back at my notes there, but one of the other things that uh, that Cody had said, and again, if you guys are just joining me, we're obviously doing a little different uh, little different format tonight for the business builders. We're still going to be doing the Q and A, so I was gonna I'll get to to some more of your questions as I'm as I'm wrapping this up here, but the first, this first question that I'm really addressing, uh, this is a question that came in through Facebook from Cody with KB Custom Leather, and he asked about how to increase reach on social media, wanting to increase his following, um, and he had said that he's done some, uh, you know, posts a couple new pictures, tries to post a couple new pictures a week, as far as finished products that are going out but then also said he's even done a few giveaways and I didn't dig quite far enough to see exactly what uh, what the stipulations were on the giveaways there but it brought up a good a really good point of giveaways and if you're gonna do the giveaways uh, being very intentional about how somebody gets entered in that and by really being intentional with that you can you can increase your your following and your engagement a lot um, and and really kill a, two, a few birds with one stone as well um, if you have have them enter the contest and I've done and I tried doing several of these before. Um, I've had some that have been huge successes. I've had some that have been total flops. Um, and I've learned a lot along the way. But I've done the whole, you know, like, share, follow, comment shared to be entered. Well, that's, man, I think that for one, I think that's been way overdone. Um, and two, that yes, that can get you a little bit of an increase, but it's going to increase the numbers of followers, but not the quality of followers. Uh, and then they're going to, cause you're going to get people that, you're going to get people that tag people that have no interest of seeing your stuff. Um, and so they're going to eventually turn around and unfollow the page anyhow um, and because they're just just wanting to kind of get in that contest but you can have have people maybe um, vote on something and where by voting they're getting entered in the contest but you're also reaching out to get more information too um, trying to learn more about your your customer or potential customer and what it is they're after, what they want, what they like. Um, I had seen you, I had seen one, one post uh, that you did do a vote. I don't know that it was a contest. I believe it was just a random vote that you did. But uh, in, in doing that, uh, there, was, there was a lot of text prior to the actual voting part it was um it was talking about different types of spur straps and and i want 
that, uh, you know, well, with spur straps, there's a few different kinds and yada, yada. I can't remember what all it said, but there was, there was a lot of kind of filler text prior and something like that particularly, I would recommend grabbing, grabbing hold right off the bat with a, with kind of something that's going to keep people reading, um, that something along the lines of, you know, I need your opinion. I need your help. Um, what do you, you know, which is your favorite? And then get into that other text. Something to where you're asking them their opinion. People love sharing their opinion. That's that's one thing for sure. Uh, not liking where that is there. Okay. Um, so adding adding that text right off the bat in in a vote situation, but having people where they would vote, where you're getting more information back as part of that contest is a great thing. Um, having, having them tag somebody in it, but not just saying tag three people, but more, be more specific. Um, if it's, if it's, uh, maybe you're, you're doing, you want to get orders on, um, you know, holsters. I'm, I'm just going to kind of draw, take something out of, out of the air here, but say, say you're, you're wanting to drive, drive orders on holsters. So, Hey, we're going to give away, um, we're going to give away this, this holster here, this, you know, holster for, uh, 1911. I don't know. So tag your friend with the most guns in here to be entered to win this um and get them entered as well you guys each get entered or something like that because now the people that are getting tagged are people that are potential customers right right away um it's not just their you know their aunts and uncles and whoever else they're just random facebook friends they have but it's it asks people to think about who you know who has who's who has guns who loves has loves to collect guns well those people are going to probably be potential holster clients right same thing if you're doing dog collars you want to push orders on that so you have this contest and you're doing a giveaway um you know tag your friend with your that has your favorite dog something like that i mean get creative but look for that engagement and and be purposeful with it to where the people that it's going to draw to your page are the people that you're wanting to get there. You know, the people that, um, that are going to turn into the potential clients for what it is that you're wanting to do. Uh, -bum -bum. Okay. And then we talked about the process picture. So that was the big thing there. Um, anyways, Cody, I hope that helps you. Uh, this is, again, it, there's so much, so much that can be done with social media. Um, and it's a lot of it, uh, man, comes into how much, how much effort you want to put in to, as far as building your, building your skills. Um, there's with anything, there's different skills and with any platform that you choose, there's going to be, um, there's going to be skills within that platform that you can work to build and, and spending time learning about that, doing that, um, is going to help. There's going to be different features that you can use and, and learn, learn to use more efficiently. Um, I, uh, one other thing is amping up the, the frequency of your posts as well you know a couple times a week probably i mean it looks like you're getting getting pretty sufficient growth for posting a couple times a week you know you probably want to gonna want to up that that schedule a little bit to 
to get the growth that you're after as well. But I think if you start putting process pictures out, you're going to have the content to post a couple times a, or more than a couple times a week as well. You're going to find you have, you're going to have a lot more stuff to post when you start ramping that up a bit. Um, Cause you think for every project that you're posting a finished product of now, you can probably get three or four, four posts per project out of that. Um, when you're posting a little bit more about what goes into it. All right. I'm going to scroll up here a little bit. Oops. Try not to kick things here. Seen some great comments coming in. I want to go back and check. Um, Dan, Dan from Roseburg. How are you, Dan? Uh, boy, you, Dan has actually won a shirt a few weeks back. I'd ordered some more in. We, it's been crazy and, and things, uh, getting stuff in, but we have got them in. So people that have won shirts the last few weeks, your shirts are going to be shipping out this week. So that's exciting. Um, Chris Landstrom. Hello, Chris. You ought to be excited too. I'm going to show you guys right over here. Chris had requested a video right over there on that cut table is a whole bunch of new leather. Um, I got a whole pile of leather in today. So the video that Chris asked me for weeks ago about rolling out new hides and where to cut what out of, um, that one is coming up this week, Chris. So, okay. Carter, how are you? Hello, hello. Paul, you need an oh wow piece to get attention. Yeah, an oh wow piece is always good for sure. Frank, I know it looks like you probably got in right in time there. Connie, word of mouth is the best advertising. Yeah, word of mouth is great. And giving people something to talk about too. And that's where it uh, goes back to, to showing more than just the finished pictures or just the plain text. Um, having showing the process pictures is going to give people something to talk about more too. It's like, Oh wow. You know, man, you should see what this guy's doing. It's there's so much that goes into this. Um, or having the, the inspirational quotes or the uplifting things, stuff like that. Um, or a joke, heck, put, put jokes out there, anything. It will get people something to talk about. Um, okay. Barbie like to give progression photos. Yep, that's for sure. Project in progress photos. Great idea. <laughs> you, Connie, your curiosity's got the best of you. Barb, you too. Um, so working on drawing a pattern here, this is actually a rear jockey for a saddle. Um, so one of these goes on each side of the saddle there, but I'm doing, I have a, a client that I'm, doing some tooling for um, another saddle maker. So I, I, I'm I not a saddle maker myself. I don't build the saddles, but I have a few people that, um, that have me do some tooling for them. So this is kind of one of those projects that, that I got rolling here that I'm working on. So that's, that is what it is that I'm sketching on here is the, the rear jockey to the saddle I've been working on. Okay, where do we go here? I've made items for family and friends who in turn showed their friends and then their friends asked me to make that item they're looking at. Yeah, boy, having asking uh, asking customers to to post pictures maybe or to send you a picture of them uh, you know, wearing something you made or using something you made is a great deal that you can use those pictures to post as well. Uh, I mean, that just creates social proof too. Like, oh boy, other people are buying this stuff, using this stuff, uh, and actually seeing it on people is, is a great deal. Okay, I get a lot of great ideas from customers on what to make. Yep, customers definitely... Definitely drive that what to make thing.
Yeah, Chris, you're welcome. Thank you for being patient on uh, on that video on the leather there. Carter, have you always been artistic or did you have to draw two, three hours a day? It's coming from a bad artist. Well, um, man, Carter, it takes time. I have not, I've not always been able to, to draw like this. Um, you know, I think, boy, there, there's so many people that are way more talented too. Like I, I kind of, I don't know. I think there's there's fundamentals to drawing and there's some people that are just super super artistic that seem to be able to just come up with things right off out of their head, you know, and and it just flows for them. I honestly don't consider myself one of those people. Um and I know like coming from from where you're at there Carter, you might be like, yeah, whatever. Um, but in all honesty, I've, I've had to work to, to learn the fundamentals of creating flow and, and learning how to do some layout stuff. Um, you know, there's, there, there's just basic fundamentals. Once I start rolling in kind of what I call the, the skeleton of the pattern here, these, these faint lines that you can see that are laying out that flow, there's, there's fundamentals to how I'm doing that um, and, and getting those lines to, to flow off of each other. So I'm just using those, using the fundamentals and, and then building off of that. So I, there's a, I do offer like the fundamentals of floral, drawing floral patterns. And that's honestly what I'm doing is just using some, some basic fundamentals and then and then building on that but there's different things about filling space and and flow that uh, that can be learned and and that's where you know that's that's where I've had to do I've had to learn a lot as I as I've gone and then once you learn those fundamentals then it's then it's practice it is it is putting a lot of time in um, and you just you get better you get better and better the more you do, um, as long as you're practicing good fundamentals um, with anything. You can you can practice anything the wrong way lots too, and really set in those set in those habits as well. Um, so being being intentional with those fundamentals and and with your practice uh, can can help build those skills for sure. Okay, where we go here, left off on. <laughs> and that follows right up Chris's comment there. If you could whack me on the head with your magic wand and make me be able to draw tooling patterns like you, that's funny. Well, hey, jump jump on the website, get the get the drawing course. I, I promise you it is a great uh, great investment for for what it is, it's a there's a huge value in that course, and that's one that you go through, and um, it's all a pre-recorded standalone course. So once you're in there, you go back and watch that over and over and over, and and draw along with me in that, and and put the practice in, and it will help. I promise you that. Uh, oh, Barb, yes, tooling on rough out. That's um, that's its own special kind of aggravating um, all together. <laughs> um, the, yeah, it's, it's doable. It's just not super fun. That's for sure. Um, you, you tool just the same, but boy, running your knife cuts and all that, it's not, uh, not, uh, not as easy as you would hope it to be. Um, but it really kind of comes out with a pretty cool look when you, when you get down, get down to it and actually finally get your get it cut in there and and get to beveling and shading it it really turns out kind of cool looking i think but everybody's got their own opinion on it um so i don't 
perhaps a follower project would be engaging decide on what you want to make then do polls voting on different steps design aspects colors hardware along the way yeah mike that's a that that's a great thing there you know and so taking what mike's talking about there kind of a follow along project um with the engagement i think could be could be really good um and and then doing kind of taking that a step further and let that project be the giveaway project and that every time you vote on a step of it you would be entered into that drawing um yeah i think it's a i think it's a great um that's a great idea mike and then beyond that too i would have it to where they could vote on something them be entered in it as well as letting them um tag somebody that that they could enter get entered into it as well um because if they if it gives them the opportunity to to help somebody else win something uh, even if they don't win it themselves but if they help their friend win it it just adds adds to the adds to the whole experience you know they they're going to feel good about being a part of that as well so yeah i think that's a that's a great deal there um okay chris i have the you have the course you think it's going to take magic wand okay well chris so i'm gonna i'm gonna uh call you out on it too and ask have you done the have you done the 30-day challenge on it like draw get your notepad start 10 minutes a day just start sketching in that notepad on, on a new page each day i i, I want to see you do that 30-day challenge i'd be curious to see uh to see the improvements in that 30 days there okay maggie oops where you go is there a chance you may make more specialty patterns as time permits i love the style of these and feel their great practice makes perfect style items yes um yes i will be doing more specialty patterns um as we go um oh probably i you know what there my my release one later this month um maybe at the end of this month if not uh in june i do actually have a couple drawn up that i need to tool out and so they can be ready to ready to release um but but once uh once we get finished getting some things set up in the shop here, then I'll be able to kind of designate and have a little more time to to get those out and out and going, get them released here. Um, but I there's some other great ideas that haven't been drawn up yet, but I've had lots of requests for different things. So hopefully be able to add even more to the specialty pattern. Um, collection as we go as well so there's definitely lots of things happening in and around the shop here um but yeah specialty patterns i would like to get on a schedule where we can release you know a new one every every month or every other month or something i think there that could be you know just a good addition always having always having something new coming out i man i'm i'm kind of with you on that maybe i really love that style um it's just seems to be a little different than than what you see a lot of um, and give it's really fun to see all the different projects that everybody uh, uses those on when they they use some of the specialty patterns and then post pictures and and tag tag me in it um, to where I get to see what that's going on, whether they're going on rope cans or jackets or um, no, or lots of different things. Um, 
Yeah, Connie did the bucking horse on your May piece, submitted it for critique today. Really like those. Plan to do the cowboy next. Yeah, Connie, um, I haven't, I, I saw that, I saw your picture get posted, and I need to, I haven't got a chance to get on there to do the critique yet, but yeah, Connie did. If uh, So if any of you guys are on Facebook in the Leather Life Classroom, which there's a link to the Leather Life Classroom in the description here, and that's the the online course where I do, it's a subscription-based course. We do a new project each month, and I walk you through step-by-step -step, um, with videos and patterns. And the May project that we did was a, a cooler topper, uh, and I did some corner piece tooling with the border, and then we did a tic-tac-toe board in the middle, um, just kind of a summertime game thing to put out there as an option. But with the projects, um, you know, a lot of people get creative and do, do different things on them. And that was so Connie did, did hers is really awesome. Did the corner pieces and then stuck the, um, the bucking horse pattern right in the middle of it. And it turned out really cool looking. Um, so that was awesome to see. Um, but, but, um, <laughs> Chris, you made it about three days and threw away the notebook might say I'm artistically challenged, but I'll try again. Well, yeah, try again. <laughs> you, got, you can't just go three days and throw it away, man. You got to stick with it there a little bit. Uh, yeah, no one ever got awesome in three days, I promise you. All right. And just think, that when you get down to the last of it and you're looking back at those early days, then, man, you'll be... Um, you can see that improvement on there, and it'll be really awesome. Um, is there a certain item to practice drawing in the 30 day challenge? Uh, so Christopher, great. No, there's not. So part of that, part of the course, what I talk about in there with that, with the chat, the 30 day challenge, which I think I'm just going to do, we're going to do another big, I'm going to do a challenge. Um, I, I don't have all the details worked out, so we'll get, I'll get that worked out and let you know. But, um, but as far as the practice thing goes, get you a notebook, just, uh, you know, like was a little spiral sketchbooks and it doesn't have to be a full, you know, full sheet one it can be the, the smaller ones, but set a timer each day, set a timer for, uh, 10 minutes and, you know, or however much time you want to put in there, but don't go too long. I'd keep it short. Cause then it keeps you kind of hurried along a little bit, like 10 to 15 minutes a day. And, and that would be, that'd be sufficient, but write, write the date on the, on the paper in the corner there, and then hit your timer to start. And when you start, start sketching out. So, you know, if this was your, your thing, you would, okay, I'm going to come in here with some circles and, and you can just start sketching however that's going to look for you maybe you can you'll start laying some some flowers in and nothing has to be be perfect but we can just start getting that that flow setting some things in and who knows maybe you're you get in your 10 minutes to where you can you can start getting a full pattern laid in maybe it's just the flow lines that you're getting you might get to where we can start putting in in some leaves and then we can get some vines going none of it has to be be perfect at all but the the idea is that you start taking the fundamentals that we learn in that course and then start practicing those just by starting with that skeleton and then starting to to do your fillers And eventually, if you stick with that each day, setting your timer and and rolling uh, 
rolling your pattern out there, you'll notice by the end of 30 days, the amount that you get done, as far as the space that you can fill, and the, you know, the ability that you're filling it with too, how much, how much flow is there? How much actual detail do you have time to, to put in on your pattern? All that stuff um, is going to improve in your 30 days. So it doesn't have to be any specific thing. Um, and it doesn't have to be the same each day. You know, make it, let it be, let it be different each day. You know, one day you may be trying to sketch out a full, full thing. The next day, maybe the next day it's just running kind of a tighter little border piece here. You know, there's no no one right thing that you have to do. And again, like I said, it doesn't have to be the same thing every day. Just pushing yourself each day to stay within that time frame. Because the thing about it being in the time frame and not just being, okay, I'm going to draw for hours. So there's nothing wrong with drawing for hours either, but... Um, you don't have time to to really fuss with it you got to just kind of keep rolling let it be what it's going to be you'll start fine-tuning it as you go but with that time limit it's going to make you want to push a little bit further just so you can oh i gotta boy i gotta get some more done well how can i how can i fill this up a little bit more maybe my time's about out, but gosh, if I can just lay out a little bit more of this skeleton here, maybe that'd be kind of cool. I can get it to where it at least fills that page a little bit more and because I want to feel good about what I get done in my 10 minutes. So I got some detail, but I want to keep some things going. It, it's just going to help build those skills over time. So, um, so Christopher, hopefully that answers question good enough there. It doesn't have to be exactly the thing, uh, the same thing. Okay. Let me see here. Go back to checking some comments. Should do a simple style revolver holster, six inch barrel with a tooling pattern. Fitting sketches is one of my challenge. Ooh, holster patterns, huh, Jason? That would be cool. We'll, uh, we'll have to look into that. I was thinking even like a holster pattern pack would be kind of awesome to do too. Um, Paul, should you copy to get the feel of the shape for the shapes? Um, I mean, you can you can trace over something that that can help if that's something that um that helps you but really learning if, if you can get the more of the fundamentals and starting to practice you know again okay well can i can i sketch a circle get you know get to where you can sketch a circle the best you can um i really like sketching light is then I can build that shape how I want it so it just starts getting darker as I'm filling that in um, and then I can okay well how do I branch off of that and even if I'm coming to branch and oh that's that's looking like it's coming out too straight I can Just keep I 
and lightly building that in. Um, there's, if you go on my website, there's a, a, it's a free swivel, swivel knife guide pattern. Um, and it's, it, it's nothing special. It's going to, what's it look like? There's a, I think there's a circle on the top and then there's going to be some lines like this. Um, oh, and then make some lines like this. But there's there's some of these base lines that are actually just it's it's meant to be a guide for um, for running your swivel knife. You start with running those base cuts that I have in the pattern, and then you can start filling in there. Um, I believe there's a, I have some videos on using that guide. Um, I don't know if I've done any in a while and I can't remember honestly if they're on YouTube here or if it was on Facebook, but I mean, I'll need to update that and do one on, on YouTube here anyhow. So it's searchable, but, um, but you could print that off. It's a free, free guide and just start by tracing those off. Um, and then working to sketch right around those. It's going to help help your your movements just sketch in both ways because again that's you know a lot of your base fundamentals are going to be lines that are scrolling off of each other like this, right? whether that's little vines that you make out of that or whether that's just decorative cuts that you're pulling in there. Um, so there's, again, that got off way tangent there on, um, on, the, on the drawing fundamentals, but that's kind of to be expected with, uh, with what I'm doing here, right? We're, we're doing this drawing this pattern up as I'm going here and which wraps me back around to our original to our original topic of you know how to create engagement and and increase followers on the social media um, you know it's taking a chance to add value um, creating something for people to talk about it's it's not just what I'm saying, it's what I'm doing. So it's exactly what we're doing right here. While we're doing this business builders, I'm sitting here sketching and it's giving you guys an opportunity to to watch and, and kind of see how I'm going. But now it's also opened up conversation. Well, oh man, I gotta work on my drawing. How how does this work? How does that work? Well, um, you know, there's there's opportunities now. Um for for engagement here there's people have asked specifically about drawing we've got to talk specifically about the drawing course that i offer um, we talked about the the practice pattern that's on the uh, that's on my website there the the free swivel knife guide practice pattern and and that gives you know opportunity if you want to 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 jump on that website to get that free pattern well now that just opens up more opportunity if if you decide well, hey i want to maybe get some other patterns uh to tool up i want to you know practice tooling on patterns that have already been drawn with that flow in mind so i can start learning that flow um if if we'd uh if i'd have just had this picture drawn and sitting there it probably wouldn't have, it wouldn't have done, um, wouldn't have increased the engagement on that particular thing, on the drawing thing or on the drawing course or any of that. So it's, it's just an example to not just what we're talking about, but I mean, you can see it in action just like this. Um, and on, honestly, I wasn't, when I decided to, uh, to be drawing during this episode of the business builders, uh, it really wasn't even with that intention in mind. It was honestly just because I need to get this, I need to keep working to get this drawed up. Um, so I thought, man, it'd 
be something cool to watch anyways while while we're talking business stuff um, and look at the engagement that it's that it's led to um, in that drawing all right uh, Dan, you just bought the book. Awesome, man. Did you get volume one or volume two? I, um, I, I think I saw an order come in, but I didn't see which volume it was for. So, uh, Oh, Paul, you don't mean trace. You just mean use it for an example. Like look at a pattern and then try to recreate that. Is that, is that what you're asking there? Um, if, if, that's, if, if, that's what, if that's where you're going at, then yeah, absolutely. I would say... Um, yeah, look at something, man, look, may, I, I wouldn't maybe recommend looking at just anybody's work and trying to, to recreate it. Some people get a little touchy about that, but man, take any, any pattern that you see me do there and look at it and try to, try to resketch that. Um, and once you start looking at, at the different fundamentals and seeing the skeleton there, it'd be really easy for you to, to kind of look and start picking that up out of out of my patterns there too, um, you know, to get that initial layout and then try to try to recreate that. Um, that'd be a great deal. Uh, <laughs> makes you want to see it done. You drew us in bingo. Yeah, there you go. Um, which goes along with, um, gosh, I have to look back on, I think maybe Mike had talked about doing a, a progress, um, project for people to to get engaged along the way and and do some some voting on different things so they would be engaged in in that project and want to stick with it to see see it done all the way um and here's a little here's a little cross promotion for you too paul you won't see it finished on youtube but um i I'll, I'll do you one better though i will post a picture of of this once i finish drawing it i will post that on instagram so uh jump on on instagram and and be sure to follow me on instagram so you can see the finished one there so there's a good example of of cross promoting on your on your social medias there draw drawing uh audience all through through the different platforms um okay we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this evening i think i think i've got through all of our questions here but um if if you haven't had a chance to check out the the links in the in the description there 23 plus is, is my actual business so if you did want to get the uh, that practice guide we were talking about or actually access to any of the drawing or tooling courses those are are available on there as well um and then the S and D design co is my, uh, is my wife's business and she produces the t-shirts, which I'd love to give one of those away as well. And we're going to do that here in just a second. Uh, the other two links on there, the leather life classroom is the subscription based class. We talked about doing the projects in each month. Um, and Jason just asked, what size cooler was that you did for the online course? That was the uh, Yeti uh, Roadie 24, I believe is the, the name on that one. So it's just kind of a, the midsize Yeti cooler there. Um, and then the last link in the, in the description is Weaver Leather Supply. If, if you're not to the point where you have a business account uh, and are getting that savings, from um, from them, you can use promo code Joe10, and that will save you 10% uh, on anything you order there. Uh, again, that, they've just partnered with me to be able to add that or offer that that discount to to you guys as followers on here. So again, if you don't already have that business account with them, you can use that promo code to help. Uh, help increase your profits a little bit, drop down some of the cost for you on your uh, tools, machinery, leather, finishes, all that good stuff. Um, Connie, you should film yourself tooling this. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. This this one may or may not get film tooling, but we're going to, I'm starting to get things kind of 
under control in here where we're going to start getting a lot more tooling videos i know we haven't had a ton of tooling videos outside of the classroom lately but we'll start get, adding some more on those as well carter wants you to sell a couple more belts you're going to get the drawing course cool man that's awesome um man and if you live closer it'd be really cool too we're doing a a belt weekend actually we're, we're starting the live classes in the classroom here uh starting here in about uh, two weeks uh, there's a we're going to do kind of a whole belt weekend there's a, a belt drawing class on thursday a belt tooling class friday and a belt construction class on saturday um, the links to all those classes are are on the website as well but those are live in-person classes here um, so if anybody's within within distance of of traveling uh, to pendleton here wants to come take a class here in the shop be sure to check those out as well and we'll, uh, we'll be having more and getting adding to the class schedule as we go but those classes are available um, right now there's still room in those for registration there all the classes in here are going to be limited uh, to really let us take advantage of a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and um, get the get the results that you're after but the the belt weekend classes you can do uh, you can do any one of the three one or two or if you do all three of the classes then you actually save some money there as well do a kind of a bundle of packaging as well so uh paul yeah atlanta is a bit far you have to have to plan a little more in, a hit, in advance for that one uh Brian try and swing in the new shop awesome carter well yep can't wait to see you come to town and we'll uh, get you here in the shop um where 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 i'm looking looking back up here trying to get through my comments there we go mike stoning um man i love the idea of of doing the the follow along project with the engagement in there asking people to to vote on the different steps great great suggestion it rolls right on with the main topic of tonight um love to get you a shirt headed your way if uh if you would send me your information i need uh shipping address and email address and t-shirt size you can either email me at mealingjoe at yahoo.com or you can um, you can message on facebook at 23 plus so 23 plus or you can instagram send me a message on instagram which is at 23 plus dot leatherwork so 23 plus dot leatherwork and whichever whichever place you want to get me your information that'll work we'll get that uh get that going edge your way again if you guys have gotten shirts last um uh, the last couple weeks we i finally have all the all the new sizes in so i will be getting those uh shipped out here this week as well but appreciate you guys being on here hanging out with me all the great uh questions and engagements i appreciate that and we will catch you here next time for another business builders